Abby. All right, here we go. This is where we start the basics of geometry. And some of you are going to be fairly frustrated because we are not going to take the typical math approach or typical school approach where I give you a bunch of information and later on you puke it back to me. Today we're going to talk about a lot of definitions and uh, terms that you need to use in geometry. The thing that's going to bother some of you is you're going to write the definitions. And whatever definitions you write is what we're going to use for the entire year. What's my job then? My job is that you write good definitions. So most of the lesson today is talking about how to write a good definition. Okay? So let's start with this. Evan, what do those two things have in common? Good, they're both animals. Keep going. What else you got for me? They're both us. Good. Keep going. They both have four legs. Excellent. By the way, for discussion purposes, you all know that's a dog and a cat. So we're going to assume that we don't, you know, like dogs have four legs. Is there a dog out there with three legs? Yes. But we're going to assume. The, the stereotypical dog, the stereotypical cat. Back to you, what else? I mean, you could go through and list all the body parts, four legs, a tail, two eyes, a tongue. I know they have like orange fur. Those two, in fact, do have orange fur, very good. Anything else? No. No, that's it? Anything else they have in common? They both have long hair. They both have long hair, very good. Anything else? They're both mammals, very good. They both have nervous systems. They both what? Have nervous systems. I don't understand the word you just said. They both have nervous systems. I don't know what that is. Nervous systems? Oh, nervous systems, gotcha. Well, yeah, I mean the body parts, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, livers, lower intestines, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, Evan, back to you. What are their differences? Other than one's a dog and one's a cat, that's too easy. The ears. Oh, do tell. Like the dog's ears are flopped down while the cats are like holding up. Perfect. What else? Like dogs seem to be more energetic. Dogs are better. Cats are horrible. Right? Cats are the pet of Satan. Right? Clearly you haven't met the right cat. Okay. You, Lucy just brought up an excellent, could you repeat that again, please? You can't make the assumption that one's better than Correct. I injected one. my own personal views into the question. I apologize. I will try not to do that. Just for giggles, what is this right here? That is not a dog. What is that? That is not a dog. That is not a golden retriever. That is not an animal. It's a picture, okay? Now that seems stupid and trivial. We all know it's a dog. We all know I intended it to be a dog. But from pure discussion purposes, that's a picture. This is a picture, okay? But we're gonna go past it. That. And that's relevant to what we're gonna do later with geometry. Okay, Evan, anything else? Anybody else? Um, wait, wait, hold on. Dogs bark. Cats dogs bark, cats meow, yeah. very good. Unless you got that weird cat on YouTube that can actually bark like a dog or a dog that says they can talk, you know, roar, roar, it sounds like they said, give me some chili, you know, something like that. Okay. Uh, the cat has a shadow underneath. Very nice. The cat has a shadow underneath it. The dog does not. Well, dogs have a little shadow, but not as big as the cat's shadow. Okay. Listen. The cat has stripes. Ooh, cat has stripes. Dog does not. Good. Anything else? Right. The cat's eyes are different. Good dog has dark brown eyes, the cat has some creepy golden eyes. Okay. Anything else? Yep. The cat has vertical irises, the dog has normal ones. Then so you're saying vertical dog. irises are not normal? They're just the cat ones. They're cat irises. Yeah. yeah. And then, then he's got dog irises. The, the, sorry, they. I don't want to assume anything about the dog. It's 2022. Okay. Good. Anything else? Back up. Uh, the dog has its tongue out. Yeah, or its mouth open, right? Yeah. Dog's mouth is open, cat's mouth is closed. Rosemary? The dog's larger than the cat. In the picture? In the picture. 
In the picture, okay, good. We don't necessarily know that. Normally, a golden retriever would be bigger than a cat. If you have a cat bigger than a golden retriever, you might want to get rid of that cat. <laughs> or your cat is actually a puma. Um, okay. Okay, great. Problems? Good. <laughs> Meg? What do those two things have in common? They both take up space. Okay, that's a true statement. Good, both have four legs. What else? They can be found in a house. Good. What else? Outside the box. Scott? They're both on the floor. <laughs> Good. Neither one is hovering. They're both on the white blank void. Okay. Kushi, are you raising your hand? Yeah. What? Both of them are colored images. Okay. What color? Uh, one is like brown. Would, would it be safe to say they're both brown? Yeah. Okay. Uh, both, both in the Color brown. Good. What else? You're missing one. Hmm? Yeah, technically speaking, they're both pictures. Good. What else? They're both objects except like the dog. <laughs> they're both objects except the dog. Wouldn't that mean that you're saying the chair is an object? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So you're assuming that wooden chair weighs about the same as a golden retriever? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's a, a maybe the dog is really thin and the chair is really heavy. Maybe it's made out of oak or something. Oh God! You can buy both of them. Okay, yes, you can buy both, of, well, you probably had to buy both of them, or, I mean, but you could also say you could steal both of them. That's true. Right. So, I mean, we can go down an avenue that isn't necessarily very productive. It, I mean, you could do all kinds of weird things, like you could burn both of them. Okay? It's just not, it's not healthy nor productive, what they have in common. So there's going to be a lot of things when we start writing definitions that would apply that aren't necessarily relevant to what we're talking about. How about the fact that they both have backs? Backs. Dog has a back, a chair has a back. They both have seats. Dog has a seat, but chair has a seat. What are the differences? Brody. <laughs> you came up so easily. <laughs> you what? 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 It's like a tree in the thing if you cut the tree. The tree's not alive. Yeah, but okay, yeah, once you, you cut down, once you chop yeah, yeah, them, so one is breathing, one's not. The tree. One is breathing, one is not. Okay, or we could just make a general statement: one is alive and one is an inanimate yeah, object. Okay. Okay. Good. Anything else? One of them is made entirely out of wood, and the other is a dog. Well, and I would assume the dog is not made out of wood at all. Yeah. I mean, you don't even need it entirely. One's made of wood, the other one's a dog. Okay, good. Loose? One has fur and one doesn't. Good. Yeah. I've never seen a furry chair, but I'm sure there's one out there. Where would I see it? Where? Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. I guess I have seen a furry chair. Becca? One's a chair, one's a dog. <laughs> that is a true statement. Let's move on. Okay, please write a definition of that thing. Now, hold on, let me clarify before you start writing. 
I'm referring to the fact that it's a dog. Don't write a definition of a picture of a dog. I want a definition of a dog. So, with your definition, you need to consider a couple things, and I'll give you I'll give you some ideas, and then allow you to revise your definition. Your definition should adequately describe the thing you're trying to define, but eliminate things that aren't that. So, for instance, if I define that as a furry pet, that would be a bad definition. Why? Because there's other furry pets. For instance. Uh, a cat. A cat. A fish. <laughs> oh, we got a lot of work to do. Hamster, gerbil, ferret. Rat. Okay. Give me another furry pet. Yeah. That's why I asked you. Chinchilla. Chinchilla. <laughs> Snakes aren't furry. What's wrong with you people? All right. Bow, what's your definition? I say that uh, it is a small, uh, it's a mammal animal. They can move, hear, bark, and grow. They have four legs, two eyes, ears, and a digestive system. Okay. Did he adequately describe a dog? Yes. Did he eliminate all the other possibilities? No. Did you say that? Why? You think it has eyes, like other animals have eyes too? Yeah, but we're talking about the whole definition. So I, I have a counterpoint for you, Bao. Would your definition also apply to a wolf? Well, can the wolf walk? They can. Okay, so I can't just say So that. Don't, don't, don't revise, just answer my question. Would your definition also apply to a wolf? Okay, so that means that you need to change your definition, right? Yeah. Okay, so how do we... I didn't even get to ask my question, but go ahead, Liz. Take a shot at it. This is like playing Jeopardy when you fuzz in too early, and you have to answer anyways when you don't know what the question is. So you could add that's usually kept domesticated to the end of it. Okay, so we could bring in the fact that it's domesticated or a pet. So, Bob, if you go back to your definition, and you stick in the fact that it's a pet, would that, would that eliminate a wolf? <coughs> Just say yes, nobody keeps a wolf in the back. That some would, people, some well, people definitely do. Yes, there's probably some weirdo in, in southern Missouri that's got a whole bunch of wolves and they'll find him dead after all his wolves have turned on many of Yeah. But for the most part, people don't keep wolves as pets. All right, so looking at your definition again, does it adequately describe a dog and eliminate all other possibilities? So what are some things we want to include? What were some of the things you gave us, Bob? They're furry? Did you say that? Yeah. They have eyes, a nose, four legs. What else did you say? Uh, they bark. They, they bark? They move, they hear. They move, they hear. And uh, they grow. 
and they grow. Okay, so of those things he listed, how many of them can we eliminate? Move, hear, grow. We don't necessarily need to describe a dog. What do you got? You don't need to say that it has, has eyes. It has eyes. Okay. Has eyes. So my point being, we want our definitions to not only adequately describe what we're talking about, but also not be too verbose, not include too much information. There's a ton that you could write about a dog. They have tongues. Respiration is handled through their tongue and their mouth. Um, they have tail, all this other stuff. You want to keep it short and sweet. Okay. Questions so far? We're good? So you all have excellent definitions of a dog? Excellent. Does your dog definition take into account the difference between these two dogs? No, because the chihuahua isn't really furry. Well, technically it's still furry. It's just really skinny fur. Rosemary? Well, I was going to say, for the dog definition, you could say that they can be used to hunt, train, kill, and herd. So then it wouldn't apply to a chihuahua because chihuahuas can't kill anything. That's not true. <laughs> They're chihuahuas. I mean, what they, are they going to kill a bug? They can kill a, kill a, a, bug. Kill a bug or a cockroach or a mosquito. They definitely don't. They aren't used as herd animals. Nobody's out on a, on a, on a horse riding the range with their pet chihuahua. Yeah, but it's always. Well, your point is valid. Your, the original stuff that you listed for a golden retriever is relevant. Sometimes golden retrievers are used as herd animals. They can they can use be used as hunting animals. They can do all kinds of different things. As soon as we look, introduce the chihuahua idea, that requires your definition to be all. Who wants the little rat of a dog? What's that? I need a chihuahua. Why? <laughs> nice. I mean, my mom got him. But they like to shake. He's dead now. He's dead now. <laughs> All right, so now we get into some geometry. There are three terms in geometry which are our building blocks. Everything that we talk about is built from these things. They're called undefined terms. Question here in front. Do we need to keep the dog definition? That's entirely up to you. Keep it so you don't get confused and you use when you look back at it. It's not like you're limited for space. You're in a digital format, so your space is infinite. Okay, you can just keep scrolling. But if you'd like to erase it, you can. Okay. All right, our first one is a point. So I'll ask you, write a description of a point. Not a definition, because we're not going to define this term. I'll explain why in a second. But you've done enough of this. You should be able to put out a description of a point. While you're writing, let's go back to the dog discussion for a second. You want to be sure that your definition doesn't include words that someone might not understand. Okay? For instance, does everybody know what a canine is? Yeah. Is that a safe word to use in the definition of a dog? Yeah. Yes. Is it safe to assume that everybody knows what a mammal is? Yeah. Yes. However, if you were to incorporate the definition using the Phoenix, or no, no, what is that called? The, phylum. the phyla, 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 Domain, and, gene, phylum, genus. I know I could count on Scott. I don't know. Right? There's some yeah. silly kingdom thing, yeah. whatever. I'm, that's why I went into math, not biology. Most people aren't going to know the actual Latin term for a dog, so that's not something you want to incorporate. So when you're writing a description of a point, you want to make sure that your definition or your description doesn't include words that we haven't talked about. Moving forward, we're going to assume that we have no definitions for anything in geometry. You all know what a triangle is. But we're not going to use that as a term because we haven't officially defined a triangle yet. We'll get to that later. Okay. So Ava, read your, your definition, please. Did you see that look she just gave me? Daggers. Go ahead. Big point is a dot on a line. 
the dot on a line, okay? So what, the reason I brought uh, picked on Ava is because she used the term line and we haven't defined the line yet. It's actually coming up soon. Olivia, what's your definition of, or sorry, what's your description of a point? Okay, Bella? Okay. Uh, see ya. What? What's, your <laughs> What's your description of a point? Um, a point is a specific place on a graph and can be written as x comma y. Hmm. What if it's not on a graph? Then what? And how specific of a place? Like anywhere. Anywhere. But so could this room, this is a place, could 338 be a point? Yes. Yes? Okay. Could this desk be a place? Yeah. Could this seat of the chair be a place? Could the center of that seat be a place? Yeah. Could the 10 molecules that make up the center of that seat be a place? Could the uh, electron inside the nucleus of one of those atoms be a place? Could the, uh, could the quarks of that electron of that molecule in the center of that seat in this room uh, near that desk be a place? Could the United States of America be a place? So, Lucy, did you just shake your head no? It's not a place. It's imaginary. Okay. For the rest of you, how do we feel about that being a general description? Rosemary? I feel like it would be better to just say a point as a location. And it, not specify the size of that location? No, because a point kind of changes when you're talking about it in math, or like someone hands you a map and says, like, find a point, or like, go, find to, this, like, go, go to this point in time. Like, a point can be used like in a lot of different ways. But we're in math. Okay, so then it's, so then you could say it's a coordinate that's plotted. Well, what if it's not on a plane or a coordinate plane? Well, you said that it's in math. So, it is in math, but not everything in math is on a coordinate plane. Well, point is that I think that. Just set it down, so I think. Can you bring the text back in for me too? Yeah. Lucy, you were in a tribute? Um, I was gonna say, it's a good place. Um, could be put on a graph or in an equation. From an algebra perspective, right? But what if I'm building something out of those points? Okay, and remember these. Bro. Like when the like when you said you're building something, could that be like the shape of the point? Like the shape of the point. Yeah. Like a shape on like the graph. That's exactly what we're going to do. So think about a point. For for lack of a better description, think of a point like a golf ball. Okay. That's not a good description, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. But if you line up a bunch of golf balls, eventually they will make something that is it has a geometric name, which we'll get to later. And if you continue stretching those golf balls to infinity, they have a different name. And then if you cover the whole floor with golf balls, it's a different name. So everything that we build is going to be built with points, and the question is, how big of a point are we going to use? Are we going to use golf balls? Are we going to use tennis balls? Are we going to use basketballs? Are we going to use uh, BBs? How small is that point going to be for our purposes? It's going to be so small that it has no shape or size, which makes no sense whatsoever. The human mind has trouble with this concept of infinity. Okay, so you're with me here. Now notice, point is a location. Nice job, Sia. Well, we're gonna get really, really specific on that location. It has no shape nor size. So, if I have a Dixie cup in my hand, you know what a Dixie cup is, right? Yeah. yeah. How many points fit inside the Dixie cup? What size are you using? 
Uh, it's a standard like grandma's house sized Dixie cup. Well, that's what I'm asking. If they have no shape or size, how many would fit the Dixie cup? Infinite. Okay, good. How many would fit in this room? Infinite. Which one is bigger? Okay, so wait, I walk in the door, I've got a Dixie cup full of points. There's an infinite number of points in that Dixie cup. You're with me, right? Yeah. Then somebody fills the room with points. I'm standing in the room that's filled with points. With a Dixie cup filled with points. Which one is more, the points in the room or the points in the cup? Neither. But I got a little cup here. And the cup's inside the room. What is this, Harry Potter? The text bigger on the inside than the outside? Infinity can't be greater than infinity. It can't be? No. So Buzz Lightyear was wrong? Yes. Oh. I think, I think facing the physics okay. on All right. I can deal with that. How do we know how do we note a point? Well, here's the problem. My pencil's not sharp enough. Your stylus isn't sharp enough to actually draw a point. So we're going to use some symbols and some representations. Just like the fact that that's not a dog, it's a picture of a dog, we're going to use a representation for a point, and that point is a dot. Now, what's the difference between a dot versus a point? A dot has size. I could take a ruler, and I could measure the size of that red dot. You can't measure the size of a point. Well, we can't draw a point, so we use a dot to represent it. And points are always labeled with capital letters. That's the point X. You put an X next to it. Okay, let's go back to my golf ball analogy. We'll assume that our points are bigger, or our dots are bigger, and we line a bunch of those golf balls up eventually they will stretch into our second term, which is a line. So what is a line? No thickness, no width. So as I line up those points, see what I did there? I line up the points, they will eventually make a line. Okay, so Let's talk about dimensions. A point has no shape and no size. Therefore, it has zero dimensions. There's nothing to measure there. A line has how many dimensions? One, which would be length. Okay, good. So we went zero to one. We'll go to two in a second, but let's finish with this. Uh, hold on, where's my picture? There it is. There's a picture of a line. What do those arrowheads mean? Keeps going on forever. Keeps going on forever. I can't draw a line, so I draw a representation of a line. Okay, and how do we name a point? Or, sorry, how do we name a line? There's a bunch of different ways that we can do it. This is where things get a little confusing. So. One way is sometimes you'll just see it referred to as a lowercase letter. That's the line M. But more commonly, what we're going to do is pick two points on the line. Now, if I look at that picture down there, it appears that I only have two points on the line. That's not the case. How many points make up that line? Infinite. Infinite. Good. So I picked two of those points and I made them special. I gave them names. I called one point B. I call it the other point C. So to name that line, you list the two special names, and strangely enough, you put a little line over the top. Or you could do it the other way. Doesn't matter. Or you could put a new point on there. Let's call it Q. So you could do the line BQ. You could do the line QC. Only two points though, not the line BQC. That doesn't make any sense. Pick any two points on the line, put a line symbol over it. <coughs> A 
are we doing so far? We're good? No. I'm sorry. Zero dimensions to one dimension, stretched it. Then we take that line and we stretch it in the other dire direction to get two dimensions. That gives us something called a plane. Not plane like aeroplane, plane like a big flat surface plane. It looks like that. Think of a plane as an infinitely big piece of paper. That yellow thing is not an infinitely big piece of paper. It's just a representation of an infinitely big piece of paper. You can think of the iPad you're writing on as an infinitely big piece of paper. Every once in a while, I'll use a fancy script letter to represent a plane. But for the most part, it's usually just three point, points on the plane. So this would be plane A, B, C. OK, so look up here. This is a visual. I know you're busy writing. I took a point, no dimensions. I stretched that point. I get a line. I take that line and I stretch it, I get a plane. What happens when I stretch the plane in the other direction? A cube, or even bigger than a cube, you just get space, the three-dimensional world, the world we live in. Okay, we'll get to that later. That's like second semester stuff. Right now, we're just gonna fo focus on two-dimensional geometry, stuff that can be drawn on a piece of paper. Okay, let's take a break for a second. When you're taking notes, you need to decide how much do you need to write down? Do you need to write every word on every slide that I give you? The answer is no. You need to figure out what it is you need to write in order to have adequate notes, but not to bog yourself down in writing like a mad person all period. So on this slide in particular, I would write down the first line and I would probably draw the picture. I would not include the second one that says it is named using any three points in the plane that are not the same line or an uppercase script letter. <coughs> All right, so let's see if any of this makes sense to you. You're going to write your first definitions. Here we go. Ignoring the fact that we can find a dog earlier. That's not relevant to geometry. What does the word collinear mean? Write a definition and then we'll ask for some input. So you're breaking the word apart. Okay, two parts, co and linear. Linear <coughs> means line. What's co mean? Say it louder. Together. Together. So therefore, what does co-linear mean? Nope. Close though. Lines together. 
lines together. You just put these two words together. Right? Lines together or together lines. Two points on the same line. Co together, linear line, together on the same line. Staying with the theme, and you're all pretty good at pattern recognition, what does non-collinear mean? Bingo, two points that are not on the same line. The non negates the definition. What is a non-dog? Something that is not a dog, a cat, a moose, a cheese grater. TV remote, a samurai sword. I could go on forever. That wasn't so bad, right? Let me try that again. That wasn't so bad, right? Why? All right, I got some more for you. <coughs> this should be easy now that you've seen the pattern. What's coplanar mean? Bingo. And then wrapping this puppy up, you know what the next term is, right? Non-coplanar, meaning not a dog. No, sorry. Not on the same plane. Also not a dog. Also not a dog. You could have two dogs on the same plane, though. No? You could have snakes on a plane. Can a dog be a plane? Uh, a dog is made up of points. Everything is made up of points for our discussion purposes. Question? Oh, I love that. Did everybody hear that? Go ahead, say it again, loud and proud. Does that make points the atoms of math? All right. That's brilliant, Lucy. Nice job. I'm adding that to my slideshow. Okay, good. Question? That's the smallest thing. Would they be the quotes instead? Oh, All right. Shift it into neutral there, Hoss. Shh, I got this. All right, let's move on. Uh, actually, I think we're going to skip this practice because it's not, uh, I, I need to get to some other more relevant things and you don't really want to practice sketching things. But I'll go through it very quickly. Um, I asked you to draw a line x, y passing through the plane r, label of points where it intersects the plane as the second letter of your first name. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. And then the second one is two lines m and n that intersect at q. All right, you'll be drawing some of these pictures. They look like this. Are yours going to be as nice as mine? No. But, new term there, when the line passes through the plane, imagine stabbing a piece of paper with a pencil where it hits the plane is called the foot. Why is part of that line dashed, Brody? Um, because it's, it's hitting the um, middle point. The hole? Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, there's a cluster. Good. Yeah, it's under the plane, you can't see it. Okay. And then the second one, two lines, they intersect, the intersection point is Q. Okay. All right, good. Let's get into some algebra then. What's a line segment? You know that word, right? Say again. A part of a line. Not horrible. Do you want to? Clarify that at all? You just want to go to the chunk of a line. A part, a part, you said a part of a line. <coughs> just a part of a line? Like a part of a line that like ends? Part of a line that's not infinite. That'll work. Okay. What's the matter, Rebecca? Do you want to add to that? Oh, I was going to say the part of a line between any two points. Okay, same thing, right? So we're gonna we're gonna denote that. By the way, I got a picture in here somewhere. Where is it? Where's my? There's my there's my line segment. It is a finite part of a line. The finite part is important. It starts and it ends. 
the important thing about a line segment is it's one of the few things that you can actually measure. I can put a ruler up on that screen and tell you how long that segment AB is. Is that supposed to say infinite? No, finite, the opposite of infinite. Oh, <laughs> well, great question. Yeah, can I define finite? It's the opposite of infinite. It has a, a limited quantity or limited size. <coughs> Okay, so after you've drawn the segment AB in your notes, I'd like you to put Q between, oh, sorry. Let's just use AB so you don't have to draw two segments. I should fix that. Put a point Q between A and B. I'm not going to clarify. I'm just going to tell you to put it between. How many of you put Q right there? Okay. I saw some people put Q over here. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Did anybody put Q off the line segment? No? Okay. So if you were to go home tonight and explain to your little brother or sister what it means to be between, what would you say? You'll see. That's it, done. So you're saying, if I take Q and I put it anywhere on AB, it's going to be between A and B. Does everybody agree? So that black Q is not between, Lucy? No? Am I between you and Meg? This will work great on the video. Am I between you and Meg? I am. But does that contradict what you told me? So which one is right? Because if, if you're agreeing that I'm between you and Meg right now, then wouldn't that black Q be between? So which one do you want? The first one that you went with or this one that I got in your head and messed with? The first one, good, okay? So in order to be between, Q just has to be on the line segment. There are an infinite number of places that you could put Q then. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here, anywhere along here. Doesn't have to be in the middle. Because if it's in the middle, it's called dot, 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 a point that's in the middle between two other points Foot. is called a, Foot. no. <laughs> we'll get to that later then, I guess, okay? Some notation things. We need a way to represent measurements. Okay. So you'll notice the difference in these two things. The first one is the line segment connecting A and B. It's a physical object. When it doesn't have a symbol over it, that represents the length or the distance from A to B. So for instance, if I gave you this on a quiz and I said, how would you answer that? Where's the line segment AB? It's right here. You would do this. Done. 
Okay? If I ask you this, what would you need? A ruler, correct. This is a numerical value. That's about uh, 10 inches. Okay? Problems? Hot diggity. All right, now we're going to do some algebra. So we're going to take that idea of a point being between two other points, and we're going to solve some algebraic problems. This should be cakewalk for all of you. The algebra is really simple. The setup is a little bit different. So I'm just going to leave those four suggestions up there and let you go crazy on it. Try and solve that problem. I'd like to know the value of x and the length of ab. Feel free to work with your table mates too to see if you can come up with a picture of the situation, label things, set up an equation, solve for x, answer the question. In other words, draw some pictures. Don't sit there and stare at the screen. Draw a picture. Try some things. Get in there. Get your hands dirty. Answer? Question. Hold. I don't want to jump the gun. All right, for those of you that are struggling, let me ask you a question. Suppose I have a 10-foot stick and I chop off two feet. How much is left? Eight feet. Are we good? Okay, change the question. Suppose I have a three-foot stick and I lay it next to a seven-foot stick. How long is the entire stick? Ten feet. Are we good to go there? Good, see if that helps you. For those of you that are on the struggle bus.
You're doing a great job so far. Now show us your work. So you've answered one of the questions. What's the other question? Anybody else? What's the other thing I'm asking for? Maggie? What AB is. What AB is. Can you tell us how long AB is, please? Beautiful. Let's give it up for Dan, huh? Nicely done. Okay. We've got a segment AC. We've got a point B between A and C. Doesn't matter where you put it on the picture as long as it's between. It's got to be on the segment AC. Then he labeled the necessary parts. We know that AB is 3X. We know that BC is 14. And the whole thing is 5X minus 14. Now, he set up the problem different than I would have set up the problem, but that doesn't make his wrong or mine wrong. I would have done 3X plus 14 equals 5X minus 4. Doesn't matter. We get the same answer. So he drew a sketch of the problem. He set up an equation. He solved for x. The one thing he forgot to do was answer both questions, and that he had plugged it back in to find a, b. All right? Questions on this? It's always easier when you see the solution, but this is something that we're going to spend a lot of time on, and that is setting up algebraic equations as we start introducing some of these geometric concepts. All right, good? Beautiful. Everybody know Mr. Del Baccio? Uh, Anybody had Mr. Del Baccio for class? No. No? They're lucky. They're lucky that they don't have you? That's right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. All right. Try this one. Do you have a, do you have a question for me? Oh. Yeah. Did you have a snake that one day in the comments? I did, yeah. That's how I roll. See ya. Bye. Bye, Mr. Debaccio. Bye. Guys, what the heck? It wasn't prompted by me. It's my fault. Since we're introducing this material, you will find, like in this first problem that we, the last problem we did, you got a nice pretty answer for x of 9. That's not always going to happen. You know how I feel about pretty answers. So if you get a non-pretty answer, I wouldn't assume that you got it wrong. Okay. Is blue okay? Yeah, that's fine. Your choices are red, blue, or black. No, it's fine. All right, go ahead. Uh, 
Yeah, you can only put the pen on there. You can't put your hand on the board. Oh, okay. Otherwise, it senses your hand. some new terminology on top of some of the new terminology. Suppose I've got two segments, segment CD and segment AB, and I want to be able to show in a picture that they're the same size. We're going to use something called tick marks. Okay. We're going to be working with a lot of diagrams, and instead of writing out that the segments are equal to each other, we're going to use tick marks to represent that. So those two little are called tick marks. And the two tick marks matches the two tick marks. One tick mark matches one tick mark. Three tick marks, you know, you get the idea. Kazoo type. But we also have a new symbol, and that symbol is the word, uh, represents the word congruent. So notice the difference between these two pictures, or these two expressions. The first one says the length of AB is equal to the length of CD. 12 inches equals 12 inches. One mile equals one mile. The second one incorporates a new symbol. That's the new symbol. It's an equal sign with a tilde over it. And that means congruent. So what does congruent mean? Congruent means same shape, same size. Both of those parts are relevant. Same shape, same size. Same shape alone doesn't make them congruent. A 57 Chevy is not congruent to the model of a 57 Chevy. Same shape, different size. I am not congruent to every other person that's six foot two. Because we're not the same shape. Questions? Okay. Everybody good to go on this slide? Yes. Okay, we're done. Now, this first chapter is only five days long. It's introducing some basic <coughs> geometric definitions. On Friday, we'll transition into some more definitions that you're going to write on your own. And we will use those definitions for the rest of the year. I guided you fairly, I was pretty heavy in guiding you this time. In the future, I won't guide you as much. Okay, so we might see some variations in definitions, but we, want, we need to agree with the, that we're all on the same page for these definitions. Any part of the lesson today you need or clarification on? Not qualification. You're all qualified. No? We're good? Excellent. Mr. Rudy, are you a big office watcher? Uh, I've seen a number of episodes. I wouldn't.